18th chapter. Now some of y'all looking at me like wondering whether you can preach. And I'm wondering if you can pray. If you pray, I preach. You know, I, do. I must warn you though, I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to rush. I feel tempted to just kind of rush through this and let you out of here. But there's something that you need to hear from the Lord today. Amen. We spent a lot of time doing a whole bunch of things. But when it comes time for the Word of God, you want the man of God to hurry and rush through. I don't want nobody rushing over the revelation that God has for my life. Amen. Amen. Luke, the 18th chapter. And the Bible says, the Bible says in Luke, the 18th chapter, that he spoke a parable to them towards this end. Luke 18, 1. And the parable he spake to them was, men ought to always pray and not faint. Men ought to always pray and not faint. Tell your neighbor, push. Tell your neighbor, push. Come on, don't start fighting with him, but tell him, push, push. Tell your neighbor, push. Y'all might as well wake up in here. Tell somebody, push. Pray until something happens. That's really enough right there because his words are awesome. In fact, if Jesus had not spoken a word in your life, you would have polluted and died in your sins. But while you were yet choking and polluting on your own blood, he passed by you and said, live and not die. He's able to walk up to a dead situation like Lazarus and speak a word of life. His words are awesome. His words are so awesome that he can wake up out of the midst of a storm, wipe sleep out of his eyes, and speak just one word. Peace, be still. His words are awesome. His words are so awesome that the very universe itself is upheld by the very words that he speaks. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and nothing that was made was made without the word. The word he speaks is awesome, and this is what he speaks a parable. He speaks something that is so divine within its origin that he has to make it applicable to our mental scopistia. He grabs a book from Logos and begins to speak a radio word. And this is the principle of the parable that men should always huh, pray and not faint. I would like to share with you a fundamental key and a basic principle in Christianity. We should pray. In fact, if we follow the pattern of Jesus in the Gospels, we will see Jesus intrinsically indulging himself in the activity of prayer. In the beginning of his ministry, we find him in the wilderness praying. On the cross, we find him praying. All in between, we find him saturating himself in prayer. Many times before miracles were performed, it was after a time of prayer. Before he broke two fish and five barley loaves, he prayed. He prayed and then he raised the damsel from the dead. Countless times before performing miracles, it was after a time of prayer. In fact, Jesus is the only preacher that I know could be in the middle of a revival, lay hands on one person, and instead of making a name for himself and building a healing ministry out of the anointing and charging 1995 for the sweat that rolled off of his face, he would leave the crowd, get into a boat, cross the ocean to go into a mountain just so he could, which we have communication with God. You see, any relationship that is to be successful must have some basic form of communication. Do you know that it is reported that 60% of relationships fail due to a lack of communication? In fact, Jesus puts it this way, no man can come to the Father unless he come by me. Prayer will cause a fourfold covenant to happen in the life of a believer. The first is commune. The second is communion, communicate and communication. The word commune, it means to have intimate intercourse. It is the pentacle act of intimacy that is shared between a married man and a married woman married to each other. Intimacy is reserved for married folks. Tell somebody that's married folk business. Tell somebody no way. No way. Commune, commune. Not only that, 
the word communion. Uh, communion. The word communion is what we have in fellowship. We usually do this first Sunday. It's when we come together and we fellowship in the breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper. That's called communion. It is, it is, it is designed to create in in intimate fellowship. There's also the word communicate, which means to impart something that was not previously there. And then you have the word communication. That's two-way. That's when you talk and I listen, and then I talk and you listen. It's communication. See, it's not communication when you hold it all, all on one side, but effective communication is when you are listening to the other party. But what happened was one day Adam decided he no longer wanted to be up under the tutelage and the auspice of God, and it messed around and affected his commun commune, his intimate relationship. It affected his communion, his intimate fellowship. It affected his communicate, the divine intimate impartation of God's spirit into his life and the communication, his ability to talk with God. I wish I had somebody in here. Now the, now the, uh, uh, the root word of the word commune, communion, communicate, and communication is the word come. So really what Jesus is saying, no man can